Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. This year, I will eat less. This year, I will floss more. This year, I will put my laundry away before I wear it. (laughs) This year, I will attend worship more often. Perfect attendance so far. (laughs) This year, I will clean that drawer, that closet, that attic, that basement, that car, that house. This year, I will read my Bible, learn that recipe, take that class, finish that book, stick to my budget, and if I have the opportunity, change the world. In short, this year will be different. In case you hadn't noticed, sometime between last Sunday and this, we ticked over to a new year. Welcome to 2018. And with it came a whole slew of resolutions, promises that we make to ourselves so that this year will be better than the last. Now, some of us were anxious for the last year to end, and some of us were dreading the new year to begin, but the truth is none of us know what is still ahead. We never know what a day, much less a year, is going to. To bring, and while some of us will be happily surprised, some of us, as we know, will not. Which is why it's almost remarkable that awake or not, when the clock struck midnight, when Auld Lang Syne began, when Mariah finally got her tea. We all entered the new year together with a common hope, a happy new year. Happy new year. It's been our primary greeting for the last week. Some of us even adding that time-tested dad-approved follow-up. I haven't seen you all year. (laughs) Classic. Happy new year. We've all said it. But what does it mean? What, if anything, would make a year happy? We have some idea, don't we? It's part of why we make resolutions. On some level, we believe that the year ahead will be happy, or at least happier, If only we lost five pounds, or stopped biting our nails, or ate more kale. Sick. (laughs) But maybe it's more than that. Maybe happiness, true happiness, the kind of happiness to which we're called as people of faith, what Jesus called fullness of life, life abundant is something more, something that asks us not just to better ourselves, but to better the world, the community around us. The irony, of course, is that sometimes we have to change ourselves in order to change the world, and maybe by focusing our attention in this year ahead on some more nobler resolutions, we just might make everyone's life a little happier. And so today, on this, the first Sunday of the new year, on this day when we celebrate the baptism of our Lord, it seems like only last week he was a baby. 
we pause to consider together three possible resolutions for how this year we might make not just ourselves, but our world better. Here are three resolutions, three ideas. Take them or leave them, nod your head or just nod off, but they are given in love in the hope that through love, as the gospel promises, we might find life. Perhaps our first resolution in this new year should be to fully live in this new year. It sounds easy enough, but it is a little more complicated than that. Okay, technically speaking, we don't have a whole lot of choice about it. We're here, like it or not. Now, some of us will take a little longer, a few weeks longer than others, to stop changing our sevens into eights when we are writing the date for the year. But nobody's going to argue that we're here. We're in 2018 for better or worse. But as we know from experience, there's a difference between being someplace physically and being present mentally and emotionally, and spiritually. It's perfectly possible that there are some among us this morning who have entered the new year bodily, but are still waiting for some piece of them to catch up. We're still stuck, some piece of them, in the past, whether in the past year or years before. But the thing about the past, friends, is that it's in the past. It's why we call it the past. It's come and gone. We have passed it. We can't change it. We can't resurrect it. We can only resolve it or perhaps, if necessary, redeem it. Not that it doesn't affect us. It does and it possibly should. But the promise of the gospel is that our past does not have to own us. Do you hear? The grace of a new year is that things can change. That what is is not what has to be. But it will take each of us living in the new year to acknowledge that. To be clear, it's good for us, all of us, when we turn that calendar from December to January to pause for just a moment to consider our past year, to look back at where we've been, where we've gone right, and yes, where we've gone wrong, and if in so doing we discover that our relationships are not where they should be, if our condition is not what we dreamed, if our life is somehow off, then a new year is a chance to change it, or at least to begin. But it takes living now. The good news is that we know we can do it. We've done it before. It's so easy for us to sit in the new year and to look back at all the things that have gone wrong in our lives, to focus on every little thing that has gone bad. But friends, we've made it this far. Certainly something has gone right in our lives. Why not hold on to those moments, to grasp onto them? If when we look back on our lives, all we see is the low, how could we help but stumble? But friends, maybe if we can find a high to set alongside that low, we can have some balance as we take that frightful step into the new year. Hold on to what is good and take it with you. If we want to fully live in this new year, if we want to find happiness not just for ourselves, but for the world around us, it will take fully living now, body, mind, and spirit. Remembering, as Jesus told us, today's worries are enough for today.
Now, if our first resolution is to live fully in this new year, then perhaps our second one ought to be how we live once we're here. And so maybe our second resolution this year should be to try something new. Try something new. Maybe your thing has come to mind already, popped right up. Certainly after a cold week like this, our new something might be a new climate. What is going on? <laughs> but it's a little more than that. Try something new. Try living in a new way. Try changing something in your daily, weekly, monthly, yearly routine. Try something new new. If the past year has taught us anything, it's that something needs to change. We can't keep living the way that we're living in our world. How many times in the last year have we bemoaned what is going on in our world, the politics, the leaders, the media? And what do we do each time we shake our heads and gnash our teeth? We get those news alerts and we think, oh, well, who should we blame? And then we turn on the news that already agrees with us and we listen to the people whom we already believe. And then we get our coffee and move on with our day, wondering why it is that the same cycle keeps repeating itself. Like Sisyphus standing at the bottom of the hill, ready to push that rock back up the mountain, wondering why nothing ever changes. As if change could happen without personal deviation. All change is ultimately personal. And real transformation, the kind that will change the world in which we live for the better, takes sacrifice, individual sacrifice. It takes each of us stepping out of our daily routine, our quotidian rhythm, to find something new. To stepping out of the certainty and into the unknown world, praying that we don't step into it alone. It means trying something new. For each of us, this is going to look a little differently. You know more than anyone else what needs to change in your life. And let me tell you, friends, I know more than anyone else what needs to change in mine, though I'm sure you could give me a few pointers. For some of us, it might need to start individually, internally. Maybe this year our something new needs to begin by looking inward at what is going on in our own lives. The way we spend our time, our money, our energy, our effort, our hours. How do we spend our lives? And is it what we want to be doing? Who does it help? Fortunately for us, we have 2,000 years of Christian tradition that can help us to begin internally. In other words, maybe our something new is to start with prayer or meditation, or walking the labyrinth, or yoga, or showing up to worship a little more often. Maybe it's something we can do for ourselves to take a hard look in the mirror and to figure out what needs to change and then start to change it. But maybe we can't start internally. Maybe that's too hard. Maybe we want to start externally by jumping into something that makes us just a tad bit uncomfortable, standing when we'd much rather sit, going when we'd rather say, speaking when we'd rather be quiet. Maybe we're asked to just step out of our comfort zones, join a small group, take that class we've wanted. Maybe it's something we need to do to change our social media profile. Maybe it's changing the channel from which we get our news. Maybe it is something that only we know. Maybe it's about volunteering our time, <clears throat> assessing how it is we use our time and talent, and asking who it helps. Again, the church is not such a bad place to start. After all, we as a church have set as one of our goals that every member of this church, every person 
in our community, volunteers in some way, if not here, then somewhere, gives of themselves because in giving we receive a reminder of who we are, that we are not alone in this world. But friends, in the end, there is no magic formula. I can't tell you what it is that you need to change in your life. Each of us has to do it on our own. The good news is even though we do it on our own, we don't do it alone. Which brings us to our third resolution. Maybe in this year ahead, we each ought to commit to remember our baptism. Now, in a moment, we're going to have a moment to formally remember our baptism. Don't worry, you'll still get it out in time for the game. But today is Baptism of Our Lord Sunday, a day when we remember the beginning of the ministry of Jesus, when he took those first steps from nativity to cross, when he was baptized before God and neighbor, making a commitment to this world formally. But sometimes we forget that Jesus was not baptized alone. As we heard read, crowds came from around the region. They came to hear what Jesus had to say and to be baptized. They came to John and they entered the waters of baptism. They confessed their sin and then they began life anew. Unfortunately, we have no idea what it meant for them. We don't hear that part of the story. But if it was anything like what it meant for Jesus, then it would have been a truly remarkable day. We're told that Jesus entered the waters of baptism, and when he came out, he looked to the sky, and he saw, whether literally or figuratively, the skies open, and something like a dove come down and felt the Spirit of God among him. And in that moment, he heard a voice say, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. Friends, whether we hear it or not, the same promise is made to us. You are my child, my daughter, my son. You are my child, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. Do you see? It doesn't matter what happened last year or the years before. It doesn't matter what's going to happen in this year ahead. The same promise holds true. You are my child, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. We didn't do anything to earn it. We can't do anything, thank God, to take it away. That's the promise of grace. That's what it means to be baptized, to accept that promise formally. It is made to us, though, whether we're baptized or not. You are the heir of God's grace, which means that we, if we keep no other resolutions this year, God keeps God's resolution to us made at the beginning of time that there is nothing we can do or say to lose the love of God. The question is, will we live like it matters? Will we remember our baptism? If we keep no other resolutions, friends, why don't we keep that one? Let us remember our baptism with each touch of water, with each drink of water, with each sip, with each shower, with each bath, with each raindrop, with each snow shoveled. Let us remember our baptism, the promise made by God that there is nothing we can do or say to lose God's love for us. We don't know what the year ahead is going to bring. Maybe it will be something wonderful, and maybe it won't. We will each of us try and go into this year with some resolutions. Some of us want to lose weight. Others of us want to eat more kale. Again, sick, but we move forward. And if we do nothing else, let us remember together our baptism, that in those inevitable lows, and they will come, friends, let us remember what the promise means that we are more than our schedules, 
We are more than our titles. We are more than our grades. We are more than any other thing people place upon us. We are children of the same God, a part of the same dysfunctional family, which among many other things means that our happiness in this new year is a communal hope. We are bound together on our journey toward that common hope, toward life, through love. Friends, in this new year, let us live in the year. Let us try something new. And if we do nothing else, let us remember the promise of our baptism that we are not alone. Happy New Year. Amen.